As most of you Cam Cannon fans out there already know, me and my pal Sophia here are not much for sitting around. We've got a bunch of projects just waiting to get done. And today, we're going to embark on an exciting one. A gigantic Burmese python buttercup is in need of a new, much larger home, which means she'll also need a really cool hide box to hold all 13 feet of her. Today, I'm going to put all my newfound skills to work for her by creating the ultimate snake hide box. Well, here we go. First things first, guys, is I used the box that I actually was keeping the rhinoceros iguanas in the outside. You know, Crazy Sophia and uh, Crazy Leo. Right now, I'm going to clean it up. And now I want to reattach the lid so that I have a working one to close up the box when necessary. Basically, I'm not much of a carpenter. I say it so many times, but I like to use simple designs and then kind of add to them, which is what I'm hoping to accomplish here with this box. Now, cutting a new door for it is something that I have to do as I didn't have a door on this at all. Also got to find the right screws, which takes a little time in my crazy workshop. But once I get things going, we can get a door on there that'll be able to be shut so we can lock the snake in during cold weather. Looking for some more screws, finally found those hinges that I needed. And we're gonna put them in right now so we can get a working door. Unfortunately for me, I put them in the wrong way. As you'll soon see, the door didn't open as much as I liked it to. <laughs> oh, cannon, no oh, cannon. Anyway, no big deal, just took it off and then put it back on with the hinges in the right direction. And I also wanted it to open to the left instead. Okay, door works, great. Now we gotta put a stop so the door doesn't get pushed in all the way. And that's what I'm cutting right here, just a little door stop that I'm gonna put on the inside of the box. But this is a really fun project, guys, because I'm using techniques that I have never used before, as you'll soon see. We're quickly grinding out some of those screws so that the snake doesn't poke itself on her. And now for the fun part. We get to take some of the driftwood and some of the things that Fluker had sent me, and I can start to break up the edges and make this look like a more naturalistic cave for this Princess Buttercup. God, I love this snake. All right, this is actually quite a time-consuming process when you get to this foam, uh, but it is somewhat strangely relaxing to watch it unfold on the hyperlapse here. So this is the Great Stuff Foam. It's really cool expanding foam. Uh, I've actually been in touch with my friend Tanner Serpa, and this is a product that he uses, and I'm excited to try it out. I've never done this before with this particular foam, so hopefully we get a really cool look once I get into it and start to really kind of sculpt it. But I still have about four more sides to do. The other three sides of the square, and then of course the roof. So I'm gonna add a bit more of these lovely pieces of driftwood. Just take a screw and just put it right through and then some more great stuff and you guys get the idea. We just keep going around and around the box. All right, so as you can see, quick uh, wardrobe change. I was getting a little sweaty and I need to go buy some more foam, so there you have it. Anyhow, let's see, this looks like an interesting way to put this uh, bruh, piece of driftwood up. Sure, it's sticking out far, but what I'm thinking of doing is using this box as the center of the enclosure so it won't be butted up against a wall, it'll actually stick out in the middle of the enclosure, kind of be a centerpiece, hopefully, if it turns out good, that is. So, I don't know, we're just getting this thing done, a little bit of grinding, a little bit of carving, uh, but mostly I'm going to have to let this stuff cure overnight. But here's a really cool technique that I figured out with this stuff. You can actually really kind of, well, mound some of it up, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the lid. And by mounding up some of the foam in certain areas, you're going to get different kind of elevations. And those elevations are going to look like rock outcroppings. It's so cool when you just really go to town on this stuff. It's about $4 a can, and I bought 20 cans. So as you can imagine, it's not necessarily cheap when you're talking about something on this size, but it really is cool and easy to use. Now watch what I do here. See, you just mound it up, and as that cures, it's going to get higher, and it's going to look more like, like I said, little rocks sitting on top of that thing. All right, let's clean it up and see what we got. Hey, so here's where I'm at, everybody. Uh, as you've seen, I sprayed a lot of foam all over this. Uh, it's that gap filler foam 
the Great Stuff brand and it expands and right now it looks like a giant blob. But what I'm trying to accomplish is we've got our driftwood pieces in here that Fluker sent me. Um, I will let this cure overnight and then I'm gonna take a serrated knife and I'm gonna cut into this stuff and kind of texturize it, um, give it a little bit of a different shape. I wanted to kind of break up the right angles of the box. So we're gonna cut into this. It'll have uh, kind of, uh, believe it or not, it's gonna have a very interesting, like I said, texture, almost very, you know, very naturalistic. I'll trim this so we can open and shut the door. Um, then I'm going to take a product called Dry Lock uh, and I'm gonna coat that stuff. It's gonna change the color of it. Now, as you can imagine, I called my friend Tanner from Serpa Designs and he, uh, has been helping me out with this new technique. It's brand new for me. Um, what I'm hoping to have happen is two things, make it look more natural, uh, and then also it'll insulate it. And uh, this is going to be plenty big enough for a 13 foot Burmese Python to crawl in, coil up in and feel very secure. I want to get the box done first uh, because believe it or not, the box, can be the most labor intensive. It's the most detail oriented. I like to dress these things up. Uh, then we're gonna get to work on the actual enclosure. Uh, I'll be getting the lumber. I'll be doing the treating of the lumber, you know, the burning technique I like, uh, and then I gotta put it up. So here's where I'm at right now. Uh, we'll let that cure and I'll get right back to it. All right, now for the fun part. You get to really start to dig into that foam. I'm using a serrated drywall knife, and I like that because it cuts right through the foam easy, and what you're trying to do is create different shapes and grooves and imperfections in the foam. And it just happens that when you use a serrated knife, it really comes out very well. So you can do that, you can score it up, take off any of the smooth section of the foam. You can see how it kind of dries or cures in a very uh, smooth, fixed finish, but here you can just just tear it all up, make it look rough. Um, I'm trimming away from the door to make sure it opens and closes nicely. I'm gonna do the same for the lid. Use a wire brush, it, it gives even more kind of finer imperfections like you would see in rock outcroppings. This was an experiment I was using my heat gun to try and melt away any of the loose foam that was in it. And by melting it together, it does kind of give it a really cool finish when you put on the final additive to make this look like real rock, that dry lock, which is coming right up. I kind of liked it. It kind of melts away, but it was a very long process. And uh, you'll see here in a little bit, I got a little smarter. You'll also notice I'm smarter because I'm wearing my respirator when I'm burning stuff. Very important to do. Make sure you're in a very well ventilated area. Here are the big sections of foam that I really globbed on there and you can see I'm just peeling them away and making what I'm hoping will look like rock outcroppings. Very, very cool stuff to do. So this is kind of easy stuff, guys. You can get a can of this great stuff and play around with it. Just experiment with some of these materials and I'm sure by doing that, you'll get more and more confident. So as I said, I cleaned things up and had a bit of a brainstorm. Uh, I just said, well, why not burn this stuff with a propane torch yeah so I did uh, again very well ventilated I'm a knucklehead because I did it really quick um, I didn't put my respirator back on so make sure you do that uh, I also almost burned the entire box up so don't do that either uh, it just turned out it was a lot of fun to try this out and it did work really well because some of the foam when it burned it melted and it gave it a really bizarre look so I'm kind of digging it Okay, what's next? Yep, making sure the lid works. Okay, very good. We're gonna blow it off with some of the air gun right there. And now it's time to mix the dry lock. Now this is the product that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, and it's going to waterproof the foam, but more importantly, it's gonna give the foam a more natural rock-like or wood-like appearance, depending on how you carved it. This is more of a rocky outcropping is what I was going for. So it's a little bit, um, it takes a long time to be honest to get this stuff to soak in because the way the foam has been cut it's very porous so you're going to want to make sure it gets uh, soaked into the foam and once it does it's basically like a rubberized paint i really enjoyed working with it uh, it's going to seal it up it's going to waterproof it and it's also going to be the product that makes this look more natural so that's what I was doing. You get all sides of it coated. You're gonna make some mistakes and get some on the driftwood. So what I did was also mix in a lighter batch. Okay, a little bit more white I left in there. And you can see it kind of highlights some of the grooves and crevices and really makes them pop. So it gives it a weathered look, which is kind of neat as well. You just wanna dabble. Really, guys, there's no right or wrong way here, man. It's just whatever you feel like doing. 
So don't worry about things being perfect because nature is perfect just by kind of doing what she does. A little bit more driftwood to break up the edges. Maybe some basking platforms and voila. All right, people, here's where we're at. This is gonna be the Burmese Pythons hangout uh, in cold weather, hide box, if you will. So we've got the driftwood up. We got a door here. There it is, uh, it'll open and close. Um, you guys saw me use that spray foam. Uh, it was my first time using the spray foam to kind of create fake rock. And I gotta tell you, um, I'm liking the way this turned out. I mentioned earlier, I've been talking to Tanner Serpa from Serpa Designs, follow his channel. If you wanna learn how to do all this stuff, he's been my mentor in this. Um, basically, uh, I, I spray foamed it, we carved it up, and then I started to apply the dry lock after I mixed some cement color mixer in it. Now, obviously, there's got, we've got some uh, material uh, on the driftwood, but what I'm gonna do is the detailing process. Now, we've got silicone, okay, a couple of tubes of this. We've got some Plutoreptor bark, we got their Spanish moss. We got some uh, bendy branches I think would look cool on there, like vines. And then I've got, I've got a whole case of their Luther moss. So what I can do is start to place that stuff in certain areas to hide some of the messier parts of my uh, my job, and hopefully it'll give it a really uh, naturalistic look. Uh, try to break up kind of the the boxy shape of it. Um, I may still add things to it. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, is these boxes take kind of a long time, you know? As you can imagine, uh, I got so much to do that I gotta keep moving. Um, so um, this one is a little stripped down, but I'm happy with some of the things I've done. We arranged these in different ways. This is not gonna sit uh, up against a wall. I'm gonna have it kind of uh, off the wall a bit so that the snake will find it um, and it'll just be somewhere else in the enclosure. So not really worried about it fitting flush against anything. Um, it could become a really cool centerpiece of the enclosure, perhaps. Who knows? Uh, anything can happen. I kind of just freestyle it. I just go for it, and uh, I just figured I'd show you guys what I'm up to. But really happy. I mean, this is kind of cool, right? It looks, it looks, you know, when you use different uh, shades of the dry lock, um, it kind of gives it depth, and uh, I'm digging it. And this is my first attempt. So as for a first attempt, not so bad. Once we get the rest of the things on there, should look pretty cool. So that's what I'm about to do right now. See you in a little bit. This part was really fun. I get to take the silicone and the gun and I press the moss into it and it basically just cures around it, locking the moss in place. I'm interested to see how it wears outside. I'm sure since the moss is an organic product, some of it's gonna wear away, but even still, I'm thinking it's gonna look pretty cool to have some old pieces of moss and the older this thing gets, the better. Make sure you wear some gloves when you do this because uh, you don't wanna get any of that silicone on your hands and I started to get, well, as you'll see, I get smart, I put some gloves on and uh, we just get really into it. This was so much fun. Uh, you can take it with the gun, then I dab it with my paintbrush, which are gonna get ruined once you're done with it, but uh, get a cheap paintbrush, you dab it into the uh, foam, and then press on that silicone, or excuse me, the sphagnum moss, or any of the product that you're gonna use. Uh, just walking around, we got another piece of wood here, a little cypress, and then you can even put some of the moss on there, drape it over, and it looks great. All right, so it's been a couple days since I've worked on uh, Princess Buttercup's hide box. And uh, what's basically, this has turned into a saga, which is great. Uh, there were some other things I had to contend with here at the camp, um, but I'm ready to get back in here and do a little more work to it. Um, basically, uh, this is gonna be the build right here for now. Um, pretty excited about this thing. Uh, really excited about how the foam looks. It looks pretty naturalistic to me. Um, so I'm digging that a lot. And I'm definitely gonna use this technique over again, for sure. Um, again, uh, what we're gonna do right now though, is I've got some more pieces of cypress. I'd like to get a piece down here. Um, and then I'm gonna add some of this dried coconut fibers. Uh, this dried stuff, um, it comes in a brick. I expanded it and then it took a couple days just to dry. It's ready now. Uh, Fluker sent that to me, it's there. Uh, it's their coconut bark bedding right here. You can see it, there's the bricks. 
So uh, basically it just comes like that. You soak it, spread it all out. And uh, once it's dry, you can press it with some silicone. I'm gonna put some silicone on. We're gonna press it in here uh, and just add a little bit of another dimension to this box. I'm really enjoying building this, this house. It's almost like a hobbit hole, if you will, uh, for the Burmese Python. Um, so I'm pretty psyched. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna get to it. And you guys are about to watch, right little dude? There's a little rhino iguana. I love this little rhino iguana, it's so friendly. Anyway, I'm digressing. Let's get to it. All right, so just wanna figure out another piece of wood underneath this door. It needs a little space. This way I don't have to cover with too much of one thing. You wanna break that up, you know? You don't just wanna use one product over the entire box. It kinda gets boring. So I found a nice piece of cypress, got it locked on, and here we go. Start dabbing with your silicone, and then you press in the coconut fibers, and it really does stick nicely. Again, you don't wanna just like use one product throughout the whole thing. So you'll see that I'm moving over different areas and sporadically placing different products or sphagnum moss. So maybe I'll use some coconut bark, maybe a little Spanish moss, and you just kind of press it in and do what you want. It's kind of fun. I gotta tell you, I love it. And you can catch the excess by, or the excess rather, by allowing it to fall back into the tub below. You'll see I'm moving that around so it can catch some of the material so I don't waste the, well, I keep the waste down to a minimum. A little repti bark air, and uh, it's all looking really, really cool. Super pumped about this. It was a nice new way to flex my intellectual brain and try something, well, was that intellectual brain? No, actually, I think it's my artistic brain. Let's clean up and I'll tell you what I did. All right, here it is. It is uh, done for now. Uh, uh, basically, guys, this is as much as I want to work on it until I actually put it into the new enclosure once that's built. Uh, what I plan on doing is taking some big pieces of cypress, some more logs. I'm considering putting this as the centerpiece of the enclosure so that the, the snake is uh, attracted to it. Uh, wants to hide in it in the middle, but I'm pretty happy with it. It was just a plain wood box and uh, We've done a little decorating and I was inspired by my friend Tanner Serpa and just trying to make this even more Appealing to look at or more naturalistic or who knows just like a, a bunch of um, a bunch of debris that has kind of come together and we've got a really cool giant Burmese Python snake house and I think Buttercup is gonna love this. So uh, there's the inside. We've got the dry lock in there. Uh, so it's kind of waterproof on the inside. Should be easy for me to clean up any feces if she gets in there and mm, has a movement. Uh, again, used uh, this driftwood from Fluker, the, the moss from Fluker. We had some Spanish moss, some eco, um, their, their coconut bedding. Um, just really, really excited about the way this has come out. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, something different. Uh, because the reptiles don't just need the enclosures, they need uh, a retreat inside the enclosure. And it's more fun to create something that looks different and looks more natural. Uh, really happy with this, uh, the way the foam turned out too. So this is definitely something I'm going to be using again. Um, it's just, man, it's, it's labor intensive, but it is a lot of fun to do. So you get creative and kind of the uglier, the better, if that makes any sense. You don't have to be perfect with this type of thing because nature, uh, I believe there's a Japanese term. I don't know what it is. Someone in the comments comment below what it is, but there is perfection and imperfection. So I'm happy with it. Um, I think it'll look cool. Now, again, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some logs coming out. It's going to sit on a, a smaller platform uh, so the snake can get out uh, up and down easily. She can go into her hide. So I'm really gonna use these uh, cypress and kind of do things like this. Like maybe if it's sitting up on a platform, we can kind of do something like that. You know what I mean? Like give this thing some kind of uh, bizarro look. You know what I mean? Like I think that would look cool. You know, I can source more of this stuff here in the yard and uh, you get the picture, right? We can break it up and just give it this really bizarre, you know, naturalistic, creepy swamp feel, you know, uh, something like this. Just imagine a flat, not the wheelbarrow, but just imagining some kind of uh, flat platform and then I'll decorate the platform too. So I'm really excited because it's fun to create these habitats. It's probably one of my favorite things to do when it comes to keeping animals. So just a mock up right there. Uh, but it gives you an idea. We've now got an insulated, watertight hide box 
for the animal. So uh, pretty excited about that. All right, there you have it, everybody. A little video showing you what I'm working on. Uh, next step is to get the main enclosure built. What I plan on doing, <clears throat> excuse me, got a little frog in my throat. But uh, what I'm planning on doing, everyone, is here's Lagatha's cage. And uh, what I've got is I'm just gonna basically build on. I'm gonna add to Lagatha's cage in this direction. So we're gonna get some soil, we're gonna raise it up. I'm gonna get some more posts and we're gonna probably do uh, 12 by eight here in this section. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these down a little bit and then add. So there's now a barrier between the two. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be the Burmese Python habitat right out here in this enclosure. I just wanna get that animal outdoors. Um, it's just the way she's supposed to live. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, follow along because the build is nowhere near complete. See you guys soon. Bye.